Hello and welcome back to another DAX in Power BI tutorial. And this time we want like to talk about how we can filter slicers. So let's dive into that. At first, let's take a look at our model which we currently have here. It's a pretty basic model, but we have one fact table, which is the orders table here, and we have two dimension tables, which is the employees table as well as the suppliers table. And they have a connection in our model, so one too many, so means the supplier is appearing one time on the suppliers table and many times that's why it's the star connection in the orders table because hopefully mm, we have of course sales from the same supplier for multiple products and if you hover over the relation you can see that it is basically a one two star and also the two fields which are currently linked supplier d supplier d and the same is true here for the employees so if i hover over that i can see here is employee id and somewhere in this table if i scroll up there there's also an employee id here right so far so good. But whenever you have this kind of model structure, and one too many is of course best practice, but we need to be aware that this means that the filter direction is from the one side to the many side, so one to star. Which means that I could select one of my suppliers and I would filter my orders table. Or I could select one of my employees and I would filter also my orders table. But the filter direction does not work from the many side to the one side. So I can't use filters from my orders table in order to filter, for instance, the suppliers table or the employees table. I'm going to show you this in the, in the view itself and you see that we run into an issue there, if that's the case. So let's say we would like to analyze the customer countries, I think these are there, and let's say we'd like to see the, the sales numbers. Let's click on sales here. And maybe we'd like to switch it from, which we currently have, which is a map, we could switch this easily to a bar chart. So let's say I'd like to see this as a bar chart. Take this and uh, we got the bar or column chart in here. Okay, so I can see my sales numbers in here for the different kinds of countries. And I can see the, the most amount of sales has been generated in the United States, then Germany, Austria, and so on. So far, so good. Now let's say I'd like to actually filter my data. So my report, consumer, should actually be able to filter this. And let's actually use maybe some slicers for that. So I can tick my slicer here, untick this visual first, click on the slicer option, and then of course we need to add some kind of field. So from the orders table, we could tick the category for instance. I could tick on category here, and maybe I'd like to actually adjust the slicer a little bit. So for instance, for the items, I can make them bigger if I want. Um, that 14 I think that's fine and I can put them somewhere in here okay so far so good and if I now slice something for instance I'd like to see cheese take on cheese and I can see that my bar chart here adjusts just fine and that totally works or if I hold control key I only also can select desserts and I would see the the total sum for those two categories if I remove it I would see the data for all of them so that works fine so why is that well there is no issue here because if we take a look at the model, what we basically do is we analyze here two columns from the same table. So they are both coming from the orders table, which means the, the category, which is here in the orders table, we're going to use this in order to filter the sales data, also from the orders table, and the customer country, which is this dimension here. So as long as all is in the same table, there is no issue here. But now let's actually use a filter from one of the other tables, so from employees or suppliers. If I go to the view here, and now I go to my supplier view here, and let's say I'd like to see the supplier name. So I can take this, and then I can also make a slicer out of the table. Take a slicer option here, and then if I like to do that, I could go to the formatting option here, go to the item section, and also could take a bigger text size here, like uh, 15 or 14 here. Okay. So now I have also a supplier name here, a category, and now let's actually do the filtering again. Now I tick something, for instance I tick cheese, I can see that this visual adjusts. So far so good. Now let's, ac let's actually tick something from here. Let's tick the first one. Oh joyeux, uh, I can't spell it, but let's tick this and see what happens. Well, what's wrong here? We have selected cheese, we have selected supplier name, but now I don't see any sales data. So what's wrong? Well, the issue simply is, or the, the solution for that is, we have category cheese and we have a supplier with this name, but we have no combination of those two things. So this supplier is not providing any category of cheese. 
So he's maybe supplying drinks or or something else, but he's not from, uh, supplying cheese to us. So that is why this combination does not exist. And that is why we see, of course, an empty space here. So the visual can't show any sales because there are no sales. Now, this is, of course, not very user-friendly, right? Because what we would expect is, if I untick this, that if you tick one of the categories, then optimally, of course, this second slicer would also adjust. So if I tick cheese, I only want to see suppliers which actually provide the category cheese. And then I can drill in further, right, by su simply selecting one of them. But I don't want, if I have cheese selected, I don't want to see all the suppliers. Also those who do not provide actually the category. So how can we achieve this? How can we make sure that if we select one of the categories, doesn't have to be cheese by the way, but if we select one of those, then the suppliers get also filtered. Well, of course there are several options and solutions for that. But one of them would be if you go to the model view, we talked about that at the beginning, remember, that by default, and this is best practice, the filter propagates from the one side to the many sti side, so from one to star, and not the other way around. So what we basically need is, we actually need the orders table, because the category is coming from the orders table, to filter the suppliers table. So that is why we could actually turn on the bidirectional relationship here, so for also from the st many side to the one side, but this is not very good, and we should not do that in practice. We should keep it the way it currently is. Instead, what we should do is also from a performance standpoint as well as from a data standpoint, because bidirectional relationships are never good considering performance and they are also not very good considering you might run into problems that the data is for some reason then wrong, because bidirectional relationships create ambiguity in your model and you want to avoid that. So what's the solution? Well, one of the solutions, which I personally find really, really nice and which I'd like to share here with you, is the following. We can create a measure, a DAX measure, and then use this DAX measure actually to filter this table. And there are various DAX measures which can use for that, but a simple one is simply by counting the rows in the orders table. So let's actually create the measure. I right click on my orders table here and go to new measure. I take this. Okay, here it is. And then I say, this measure is, for instance, rows. You can name this whatever you like, but I simply name it rows for now. And say it's equal to. And I simply say, I want to use the count rows function here. All it does, it counts the number of rows in a table. Nothing more, nothing less, just that. And then we need a table. And in our case, we use the orders table. Okay, we close it and we are done. That's the whole DAX measure. Press enter. And we are good to go. The measure is here. And now we can use this measure to filter our slicer. So this specific, if I untake this one here, the supplier name slicer. So if we first select slicer, of course, this one, and then we need our measure, the rows, and drag this in the visual itself. So you can see there are filters on the visual in the filters pane. They also filter on page as well as filter on all pages. In our case, I simply drag it to the filter on this visual. I drop it there. And then I can specify here, show items, then the value, and then I simply say here is not blank. Okay, and that's it. And then I click on and as soon as I do this, watch what happens with our current selection cheese here with the suppliers we have here, the list. If I click on my filter, you see that now this list is much smaller. And we only see here supplier names which really provide the category cheese. And I can check this. And I'll show it to you, if you tick one of them, you'll see that there is still data inside. Or if you tick this one, you also see there's data. This one, there's also data. And this one, there's also data. So this little trick here, by simply adding this additional measure here, allows us now to whatever category you supply uh, or tick. So the report consumer says he's interested or she's interested in cookies. Tick on the cookies, and then you can see that the supply names are just here to only the suppliers which provide cookies on the category. And this is much more user-friendly than the other way, and also from a performance perspective, uh, perspective, as well as from creating ambiguity in your model, this is not the case for this, okay? And the reason why this works is actually because if you take a look at the measure itself one more time, this count rows, it simply counts, are there actually rows in the orders table? And if you already select 
or do pre-select here, for instance, cookies, then of course your orders table only contains rows for cookies. And then you simply, within the orders table, we look up basically, is the supplier name in this part? And if that's not the case, then he or she is not shown here. And that is how that works. And uh, yeah, that's it actually for the solution. So hopefully you can apply this in your own Power BI projects. As always, thanks a lot for watching. And in case you have not done so far, please consider subscribing. It would really mean a lot to me. And beside this, see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.